They arrested almost every trade union leader, the leaders of the nationalist parties, of progressive parties, of left parties in Panama. They arrested people who were cultural leaders. There are still hundreds of Panamanians who remain in jail with no due process, with no formal charges against them. As a result of the U.S. invasion, an estimated 20,000 Panamanians lost their homes. Hardest hit were residents in the poor neighborhoods of San Miguelito, Colón, Panama Viejo, and El Chorillo. How many people were killed in Panama, and who were they? These questions may never be answered because the United States military undertook elaborate efforts to conceal the number of dead, how they died, and the location of their bodies. What happened in Panama is a hidden horror. Many of the bodies were bulldozed into piles and immolated in the slums where they were collected. Other bodies were left in the garbage chutes of the poor projects in which they died from the shooting, from the artillery, from the machine guns, from the airborne attacks. Others were said to have been pushed into the ocean. The truth of the matter is that we don't even know how many Panamanians we have killed, but we should have more information on what happened. How many civilians were killed? The National Human Rights Commission of Panama interviewed hundreds of people in an effort to determine how many had died. What we have is different testimonies that help us to arrive to the conclusion that for sure there were more than 4,000 people who died. The U.S. military said 250 civilians were killed. I mean, there isn't a credible source in Panama that believes that's true. Whether it's ambulance drivers, human rights monitors, people, doctors who worked in hospitals, neighbors of bombed out uh, blocks, it's just clearly false. That story would be so easy to tell for any journalist worth his or her salt, but they're not telling it. When they interviewed people in Panama about what they thought of it, they invariably were interviewing white, middle-class people who could speak English. They didn't really go into the poor neighborhoods where people had been bombed. Did you see one media actually go into the bombed areas and talk to people who had lost a family or lost everything they had in the bombings. The transport plane. They focused totally on the invasion as a tactical event. Was it effective? Did it work well? Uh, are we losing many American lives? Well, another unit moved in by helicopter. 15 American servicemen have died. Gertrude Candy Halen from Dixon, Illinois, is the 20th American to die in the fight. They focused with utter ethnocentrism only on American lives. The only life that was precious, the only life that one could report on, the only life that one could consider as a serious loss was an American life. In the months following the invasion, Panamanians were shocked to discover the existence of mass graves where hundreds Perhaps thousands of bodies were hastily dumped into pits and buried by U.S. troops. <laughs> to date, there have been 15 mass graves that have been identified throughout Panama. The United States military was directly responsible for the killings of the men, women, and children that are in these mass graves and for their burial. These mass graves exist throughout Panama, and some are believed to be on U.S. military bases, which creates a difficulty in terms of access to these mass graves. We found many young people, 15, 16, 18 years old. We found people in their 60s and in their 70s. We found people killed by a shot to the back of their heads, dead with their hands tied, dead with casts on their legs or arms. Although the U.S. media created a perception of support for the invasion within the United States, the invasion was overwhelmingly condemned in the international community. If you look at any document in international law, any of numerous treaties, 
it's clear that this invasion was illegal. It's not debatable. The Panama invasion violates the UN Charter and the OAS Charter, which have specific uh, prohibitions against invasions of a sovereign country and invasions of the territorial integrity of other countries. Um, these prohibitions are very strict and clear under international law. The United States actions in violation of human rights also violates the Geneva Conventions, which protect civilians from indiscriminate acts of violence as had occurred against civilian victims in Panama. The four biggest, most important papers in this country all endorsed the rightness of the Panama invasion. That's the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, strong endorsement, the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, every one of them. Now, uh, a little body known as the United Nations had a vote about this. On December 29th, they voted by an overwhelming majority to condemn the invasion as, in their words, a flagrant violation of international law. The media was so cooperative with the government because the media are owned by the same interests that are being defended in Central America by that government policy. The media are not close to corporate America. They're not favorable to corporate America. They are corporate America. They're an integral part of corporate America. We are a plutocracy. We ought to face it. A country in which wealth controls. It may be true of all countries, more or less, but it's uniquely true of ours because of our materialism and the concentration of, of wealth here. Even our democratic processes are hardly that because money dominates politics, and we know it. <laughs> And through politics, uh, it dominates government. And it dominates the media. We really need uh, desperately to find new ways to hear independent voices and points of view. Uh, it's the only way we're going to find the truth. The goals of the United States have been to safeguard the lives of Americans, to defend democracy in Panama, then President Bush said we had to go to restore democracy in Panama. How in the world do you restore that which has never existed? Panama has never been a democracy since we created Panama for our own purposes in 1903. And all we did was go down to restore American control and dominance in Panama. The new government installed by the invasion was headed by the U.S.-backed candidates from the aborted national election. And Dara, Calderon, and Ford. Hours before the invasion, they were taken to a U.S. military base where they were sworn in as the president and vice presidents. Of course, he's not going to say that, um, that Panama is occupied. In fact, he might not even call it an invasion. Cousin is kind that were killed or massacred. He lives in the nicer area, in the oligarchical area. And, um, you know, his interest was protected. He's not running Panama. He's a puppet of the U.S. government. The U.S. government is running Panama. They're running all of the ministries in Panama. He's only abiding by what he's told to do. The invasion sets the stage for the wars of the 21st century in South America. The 2,000-mile invasion from Washington to Panama City took place primarily with bases from the United States. The essential value of the Southern Command is to give another 2,000 miles of intervention capability, which takes us right into the heart of the Andean coca-producing region, where the wars of the next decade are entirely uh, likely to take place. Panama is another example of destroying a country to save it. Uh, and it's another case of how the United States uh, has exercised a might-make-right doctrine uh, among the smaller countries of the third world. It has long been U.S. practice to invade these countries, get what we want, and leave the people that live there to kind of rot.